Hello students, my name is Parul Yadav. I am assistant professor at Babu Gnathira University in the School of Management. I am here to cover your topic of consumerism of business environment. So, uh, I will start with the consumerism, the definition, and then we will move forward towards need and the utility and the rights of the consumers. And we will discuss these topics each one by one. So the term consumerism is basically first coined by the businessmen of 1960s. So what basically consumerism is meant? Consumerism is defined as social force designed to protect consumer interest in marketplace by organizing consumer pressure on business. Consumerism is a protest of consumers against unfair business practices and injustices, which is directly related to the businesses. It basically aims to remove those injustices and eliminate those unfair marketing practices like misbranding, uh, you know, unsafe products, planned obsolescence, then uh, adulteration, fictitious pricing, price collusion, deceptive packaging, false and misleading advertising, defective warranties, hoardings, profit ring, black marketing, short weight in measures. So these can be understood as, uh, uh, you know, the injustices and consumerism is basically try to remove all these things. So as we can see on the uh, screen that what it is saying that it is a cavit amter. What actually cavit amter means that it actually make the seller aware, beware, sorry for the aware word, it's beware. Then um, another uh, line which is mentioned in the slide, which is, it is battle against the exploitation of consumer, which I've already talked about that it huge, it actually remove those injustices and eliminate those unfair marketing practices. Philip Kotler rightly said that it is a social movement seeking to augment the rights and powers of buyer in relation to sellers. Then another very important thing that we need to discuss that need for consumerism. What is why? What are the needs? So first that consumers are not only subject to exploitation of private sector enterprises like nationalized commercial banks, state electricity board, telephone departments, then another one is despite a number of laws passed to protect the interests of Indian consumers, they're not aware of their rights. So we need to make the consumer more aware, more, you know, entitled to make their own decisions. Then there are so many, uh, uh, you know, uh, victims of, of what? Like adulteration, fictitious pricing, then misbranding. Uh, you know, misleading advertisement, defective warranties, holdings, profit ring, black marketing. So there are a number of things. Then by resorting unethical, false, misleading advertisement, businesses make quick money at the cost of consumers. So uh, another one topic that we need to discuss that utility of consumers. But what is the utility of consumer? The first thing that it provides feedback information to businesses. Then um, another one is that producers and sellers will not take the consumers for granted. The first thing that it is talk about that the it is a feedback information to businesses. What does it mean? That they understand the real need and wants of the consumers, right? So this make them enable to understand market that what are the marketing concepts they are going through that. Then <clears throat> We need to understand that consumers are in positions to protect their right. Businesses will not resort to unfair and unethical trade practices. Another one is that consumers make the government more responsive to consumer needs. Right. And then another one is the consumers get support to minimize the imperfection with regard to distributions. Okay. Sometimes the seller charge, uh, you know, the, uh, the pricing, which is not uh, correct. Right. Then we will move forward towards the legislative measures for the consumer protection in India. 
that one it usually talk about the in contract act then sale of good act agricultural produce act industries development and regulation act 1951 prevention of food adulteration act 1954 essentials commodities act 1955 so these are the acts another one is the mrtp act 1969 then bureau of indus in the indian standard act 1986 and armament protection act 1986 consumer protection act 1986 and the you know these this consumer protection as act 1986 has been amended in 2019 uh, so uh, we will cover that up too then we will move forward towards the consumer right to so consumer rights usually cover the right to choose right to be informed right to safety right to redress ill right to be heard right to a healthy environment right to consumer education so first thing that is right to choose even in a competitive market consumer should have assurance of satisfactory quality and services at fair price i think this is the right to choose we need to discuss when when we are living in a uh, uh, democratic nation then there must be right to choose and when we are talking about consumerism we must have lot of options where we will have the right to choose right and another one is right to be informed that we need full of information concerning the products and the services that this type of product we are actually consuming right then another one is right to safety that product available should not be hazardous to the life of the li- uh, you know the health or the life of the consumers right then redress all that if you are you know any loss suffered by them they must be compensated right and then we then we used to talk about that the heard right to be heard that everybody should be get the opportunity to be heard right and another one is healthy environment and the consumer education that we need to make our consumers more in inform more part back more educated that they can take their own decisions rightly right so uh, next slide is uh, which is actually talks about the hindrance to the growth of a strong consumer movement right so first which is talk about that the consumer in india are illiterate illiterate in terms of um consumer education that when we used to talk about the consumer so we need to think think as per the consumer point of view that which type of product we actually want which how a seller can you know mislead us so uh, it, it is not in that sense of illiteracy but it is something related to the consumer education a citizen which need to be consumer at that particular point of time then another thing is that the legal process in india is time consuming due to which consumer do not come forward right um, as as yes this is this is something a major issue that legal process in india is time consuming so we need to think um on that no <coughs> excuse me okay so it is difficult to disseminate consumer education as india is a vast country then legislative are numerous but they are not effectively implemented right then we are moving forward to the consumer protection act 1986 so this act actually pertains to the marketplace and seeks to redress complaints arising from it it actually provides protection to consumers against unfair trade practices and it is applicable to whole of india except uh, jammu and kashmir so <coughs> so who is the consumer for the act any person who buys any goods from for a consideration is consumer as defined under the consumer protection act but a person who obtains such goods for resale or for any commercial purpose is not a consumer okay what is commercial purpose then it is defined under this act that for carrying on any activity on large scale for the purpose of earning profit right then meaning of goods has been defined under the consumer protection act that the term goods in the consumer protection act has the same meaning as found in the sales of goods uh, goods act which any kind of movable property other than the actionable claims and money include stocks 
and shares, growing crops, grass, things attached to the farming part of land, okay, which are agreed to be served the for sale. Then there are the examples of services which usually uh, includes under the services that includes banking, financing, insurance, transport, processing, supply, who, who can be a complainant, a consumer or any other recognized consumer association or the central or any other state government can be the complainant. Right. So, um, right. Then what can be come under complaint? Right. So if the complainant had suffered loss or damage as a result of any unfair trade practices adopted by any other trader, right, then uh, if the good delivered to the complainant have one or more defects. So first thing which is talk about that the unfair trade practices, another one, one which is talk about the the defects the consumer is having on their product and if the services is re rendered by is in is deficient in any service in any respect if the if the consumer is not satisfied with the service then it will be come under the complaint category so here we actually talked about the three things that one is the unfair trade practices another one is the you know defects in the uh, in the uh, goods and another one is the Unsatisfa unsatisfactory, you know, anything which uh, which is rendered under the service, right? So, so there are consumer protection councils in the Consumer Protection Act. One is Central Protect Central Consumer Protection Act at national level, then Central Cons Government and Protection Council at state level. So, a consumer dispute redressal forums, right? So. Um, as the name suggests that why this forum has um, uh, um, uh, come, uh, come into force that it actually uh, uh, you know uh, have the power to uh, you know resolve or redress the consumer dispute that it a district forum in each state a state commission in each state and national commission at center at the uh, center level which we have previously talked about then composition at the district forum that each forum will consist of a person who can uh, who is a qualified to be a district judge can be nominated by the central government right or um, that will be the president of that particular district forum then a person of eminence in the field of education trade and commerce and a lady social service right then state commission how the com uh, state commission will be formed and a, a person who has been the judge of the high court appointed by the state government and two other person of the ability integrity and the state standing and have adequate knowledge or experience in dealing with these type of problems right then jurisdictions we are actually talking about the commission can entertain com complaints with where the value of the goods and the services and the compensation came exceeding rupees 5 lakh but does not exceed rupees 20 lakh right then procedure of handling complaints state commission any person agreed by the order of state commission can make an appeal to national commission within the period of 30 days so the composition of a national commission this uh, particular slide talks about a person who has been the judge of the supreme court to be appointed by the central government four other members will be the ability integrity capacity in dealing with the problems relating to economics law and commerce so the jurisdiction of national commission this particular uh, slide talks about that the value of goods services exceeds 